Hey everybody, Dr. Rob Silverman here. I'm here with James Chester from Cairo Hustle. He is without question one of the guys that I rely on for great insight into Cairo marketing. And we're not going to just talk about marketing with James today. He's going to tell you how to revolutionize your practice in multiple ways and especially emphasize not how just to bring the patient in, but really how to work within the patient and get to a particular comfort level. James, I'm pumped that you're able to take some time out of your busy day. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm really excited to fire your audience up and to share some takeaways with them. So uh, make sure you guys all have pen and paper handy because we might say some stuff here you want to take notes on. You got it. I'm ready to take some notes also. You know, your vision, uh, you, you've got a long, a short, and a medium vision. Uh, it's hard for me to encapsulate your vision. So I'm actually just going to read it and talk about the idea that you have dedicated your life to sharing the truth about the chiropractic profession. James is not a chiropractor. Over the years, he's become a master of marketing for offices across the nation. I know a lot of chiros have been relying on him for marketing, both in office, out of office, and on social media. He's recently launched a successful advertising agency for chiropractors, and it's called Cairo Hustle Marketing. So before we get into it, every chiropractor, everybody's been involved in chiropractic has a story. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your story? Yeah, I'll just open right up. Uh, many people know about this uh, little city on the Mississippi River called Davenport, Iowa. Well, little did I know that I was going to be born into the birthplace of chiropractic. Mm. So I grew up in Davenport, Iowa. So it's it's kind of like this this part of chiropractors always have this like duality. Did I choose chiropractic or did chiropractic choose me? Well, 30 years old, I grew up in Davenport and my buddies all started to become chiropractors. Um, the guys that I would like go run around uh, with uh, were all in chiropractic school. So we gravitated towards each other and every once in a while we'd just be sitting there at the bar and one of my friends would come up to me and, and impress upon his other chiropractic student buddy, like, Hey, tell him what, what you know about chiropractic. And I would go on and tell him about these ideas that I knew because of, you know, by proxy, I was learning all this stuff from different people and they were just pouring into me. Um, so I learned a great deal about chiropractic and then I had a chance to go work in a chiropractic office and it was, uh, it was 14 years ago that I started working at a chiropractic clinic doing CBP uh, traction work. So I started out as a traction tech and I did that work for six years. A lot of people don't know that's my background. So when I got into working in an office, I, I, I told the doc when he hired me, I was like, dude, I don't know anything about running a chiropractic business except for that. When I get adjusted, I feel better. He's like, I'll teach you everything you need to know. So I went through and I watched, video upon video and masterclass upon masterclass. I studied everything that Reggie Gold put out. I studied everything that uh, Deed and Don Harrison put out. I started studying everything that was being compiled and I, I started building framework um, for my knowledge of what chiropractic was. And then I started working in the clinic. I started doing the, the grease pencil drawings on films like Gonstead work. And uh, I, I started doing the patient ed and I started then going out and doing uh, um, weekend work, doing screenings. Um, and then I quit working in an office after six years and I went out and I did uh, 36 months of screenings. I did 600 events. I was averaging 28 a month, scheduling in 82 new patients a month doing this external work. Um, my network grew from two offices to 30 in six months. So I was constantly just busy out. I was basically politicking for the profession of chiropractic, um, booth by booth, area by area. And I was just a man on fire. Um, through this, me and my team have produced two documentaries on the profession. First one got dropped in 2016 called Chiropractic, the documentary. Second one dropped in 2019 called Project Patient. And in between the two films, five and a half years ago, I was like, what else can I do to add more value to the profession of chiropractic? So that's when, as you opened up with Cairo Hustle, we started Cairo Hustle. Um, to date, we're almost, I think we're nine interviews away from 500 uh, on that journey. And of that work, 
I've done probably around 1300 interviews in total. So the ones that actually make episodes are pretty special to me, but I've done so many other interviews that never like actually became an episode. So that's me in a nutshell, man. And that's uh, where I've come from and where, where I'm going. I think we'll talk a little bit about that too. Yeah, it's great. You set the table fabulously. Uh, screening. Now we have a lot of people who are not chiropractors. What is a chiropractic screening? What goes on now? I remember when I did them in Cairo school and the, the student who had the most signups didn't have to pay for dinner. So I was very invigorated at that point to do them, but explain to everybody what it is and, and <laughs> what the positives are for the doctor and the positives for the prospective patient. Yeah. You know, the best part about this is screenings i've 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 retitled them to scheduling events um because i feel like no one wants to be screened but everybody wants to be scheduled and invited in so after doing so many of these between number 600 and number 700 events um, i started to retool my processes and i started to think about if i was the prospect out in the community how would i want to be approached so i started thinking about myself being on the other side of what it looked like. And early on, man, they would send me out with these like scans, like these big TVs, a big TV that I had to lug around with like a scanner thing that I just, I didn't feel like there was much truth in it. And I would go out there and I'd scan people at a health fair or I'd scan people at a street festival. And they're like, scan me again. And I would scan them again and it would be a completely different scan. And it, it, it showed the lack of credibility in what I was doing. And I, I forever told every client that I had, I'll never do that again. And I went out and I created my own system and it became a conversational system. So you asked me what, what, if somebody's watching this, they don't know what a screen is. You go out to an event, be it a farmer's market, a 5k, a 10k, uh, street festival, uh, you know, I, I really like state fairs and county fairs because they're the most people show up to these things and everybody needs a chiropractor. So if I don't get double digit new patient signups on a day, I suck. Mm -hmm. So when, when I'm out there doing this work, um, I put up a tent, I, I have a whole system that I, I do, but really what it's like is I'll say, Hey, um, who's looking for a great chiropractor. You'll come up and you'll say, Hey, I think that this might be something I'm interested in doing. I say, fill out this little bit of paperwork. Let me know what's going on. This is the gold. Like anybody watching this, this is like your biggest takeaway. So I asked them um, if they injure themselves. I asked them if they're doing anything for it. I asked them if they've ever considered chiropractic. They tell me. And then I say, well, the good news is based on what you say here with your low back, I know we can help you. And then I tell them that um, I'm going to get them back to the guy or the gal that's scheduling the, 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 mm, the visit. And then we'll explain all that to them. So I tell them what they're going to get. So there's no confusion. First visit, you're going to get a full exam consultation, health history, x-rays if needed. Second visit, you're going to come back. We're going to tell you what we found, how much concern there is. We're going to tell you how we can help you. At that point, I call this the relationship builder. If you come in for these first two visits, you feel like you're at the right place, then we're going to go forward with care. If you come into these first two visits and you realize this isn't the right place for you, there's no strings attached for further care. But I guarantee you one thing, you're going to like us. Time after time after time, I schedule hundreds of people to come into these visits. 70% of them show up. Here's the clincher. We reiterate to them, you're coming in next Tuesday, 9 a.m. at this at this time or at this on this day. Um, we tell them what they're going to get again. We tell them uh, we do collect a deposit for the visits today. We charge them cash or card, and then we put their name and information on their little health certificate and we give that to them and we say, hey, by the way, we put a smiley face on this one because we like you. Just promise us one thing that you'll show up to your first visit so we can help you. And then we high five them and we say, Hey, we'll see you at the office. Thanks for answering your business today. So that's fascinating. So <laughs> you schedule them, you tell them what they're going to receive in the office. Um, you, you're confident and comfortable with the doctor. Cause I'm sure you've uh, gone through things with the doctor that he or she understands what's going to transpire. So my question is, what, what's the standard? You know, you're um, scheduling them for a new uh, patient exam. 
treatment. What is it? Because I just got a text. It, you know, it's funny. I always want people, please use a q and I got the chat open, but I got a text and they said, well, what, what does a doctor have to do after you schedule them in? So I think there's a lot of questions on the doctor and like. In yeah, the I, I think number one, if I were in the position of the doctor, I would become very good at converting people um, on a day one, day two process and nail your report of findings and build, build trust with your, your, your new patient. You know, I think that that's the biggest thing is I, I often tell people the reason you're here talking to me today is because you don't know where to go, who to trust. Good news is, is I think we can help you. And then they come into the office and I tell them that they're going to get the first two visits at our clinic. They can talk to the doc about anything or any health concerns they have under the sun. I say, this little piece of paper you filled out for me, you're probably admitting so much stuff that's going on. But when you show up to see the doctor, you can talk to them about anything. So I build that trust already. The doc just has to be really good at understanding what's going on, making sure that they process the person the right way and not get overwhelmed. You know, that's a great point about the trust because I went to the cardiologist. I use myself as, as an example. So I'm, I'm fine being a patient. I understand what's going to transpire. And I sat down and of course, for whatever reason, I was getting a lot of texts from, and some things were going on. So my blood pressure was a little high and I do not have high blood pressure. And I conveyed the message that I'm a little stressed today. And what did he do? He said, you know, sit down, let me talk to you. Let me go over your history. But he was trying to build that trust so he could retest me. So it, it's it's true. And that is something that as a practitioner, I get a lot from patients in that they don't know who to trust. And, and I think when you're able to share that message with the docs, I think that's an invaluable note uh, to share with everybody. So I got another text. It's right over here. Um, they want to know if I had to do one thing, James, one thing, I'm a, I'm a chiropractor. I got 20 to 25 years experience and I guess he's stagnant. We'll call it stale. What would you do? And James, I'm this new guy. I'm ready. I'm the butterfly. I'm going to set the world on fire. What is it? Should I do? What could you give a recommendation to each case scenario? Yeah. Young or old, um, new in the market or established in the market. I think that there's a couple of things you really have to be, uh, considerate of. Um, you have to understand old school marketing. You also have to understand relationship marketing and you also have to understand digital marketing and know that chiropractors don't go to school for marketing. They go to school to be a practitioner. So there's no way to like skip to the front of the line. You just have to go through and find people to work with that you can trust. Once again, the trust thing comes up. So if it's new patients that you want and you don't know how to get them, then talk to a marketing expert. Um, go for a recommendation from somebody. Uh, but when it comes to like relationship marketing, I'll just give a few hacks for people that can start figuring out how to like build relationships in their local area. Like go and meet with other chiropractors. Um, make a list of the chiropractors in your area. Take people to lunch. Find out who they are, what type of like practice they run. And then you build a better network of chiropractors in your local community. Um, I think a lot of times chiropractors feel like they like live on an island by themselves because they don't know how to build a community. Um, second thing is I would say go out and uh, find all the urgent cares in your local community and build relationships with the people running those facilities because those people are going to give you direct referrals for um, accident cases. They're going to give you referrals that they don't want to give drugs or surgery to people. They want to see if they can get rehabilitated um, naturally and chiropractic is the number one solution for that. So building those intra personal relationships with other um, care providers in your area are huge. Um, I'd also recommend going and finding a joint because they don't take care of people that have hot backs or hot necks. They don't shoot x-rays. And if you build that relationship with an area practitioner that doesn't take these complex cases, now you're going to get direct referrals from a group of people that they don't know where to send these people to. So I think that that's like one thing. Um, as far as like marketing, um, you got to like at least have one a quarter, one screen on your calendar a quarter, the biggest thing in town and go do it. Go skin your hands up a couple of times, fall over, fall down, like take some bumps, take some bruises, get through it. Um, but the people are going to come to you, man. Um, they're all looking for something. Um, but like I said, they don't know where to go or who to trust. And then we get to the digital world. 
um, go with a company that loves chiropractic, go with a company that knows chiropractic. Um, I mean, I kind of joke around like there there's chiropractic marketing agencies of guys and gals that live in their mom's and parents' basements, like go with a guy like myself that goes out there, blood, sweat, and tears that champions this profession from morning, the time I wake up in the morning to the time I go to sleep. Um, find somebody that actually does what they say and, and will do what they say and is accountable and attentive. I think the worst part of a relationship with marketing, with a marketer to the clinic is lack of response time. I agree. I, I mean, those 72 hour plus emails back saying that it went to spam. It doesn't cut it for me. So interesting. You mentioned digital marketing. Um, it's a tundra. In, in some instances, it's been classified as a black box. Um, and little backstory, James and I were talking before we came on because, you know, we were catching up. We hadn't uh, seen each other in a little while. We wanted to catch up so we could share his great message. And in that, I said to him, what about the concept of the marketing? And uh, maybe you can speak to this, uh, the marketing, but the doctor needing certain pillars of business in place to make sure, I mean, I mean, maybe I should cut to the chase and saying, listen, you, you've scheduled over a thousand new patients in 28 days. I can't handle that. I have three employees. I don't even have an associate. It ain't happening. What am I going to do with all those people? So can you speak to that problem? Cause you know, you're going to get people busy. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think it goes back to the, this old saying is be careful what you wish for. And I, I, I've actually gotten clinics so busy that their front desk staff quits in three days because they're not prepared for the amount of people that I'm going to schedule in to come into this office and they don't train. Um, I think the, the, the best thing for anybody that's ever considering doing marketing, whether it's digital or going out to their community and doing community style events is practice and train, practice and train. Make sure that your intake and your process of new patients is so darn good that when opportunities come in that you don't lose them. So get those pillars. Now, in Carol Hustle, do you explain to them some things to do um, and things to have in place so they can handle all that you're going to bring in? We coach them through it. Um, we, we check on our clients every week. We do progress reports to make sure that they're not flying alone. We make sure that we land the plane with them. I think a lot of times when you start like dating a marketing agency, it goes really good for like the first two or three dates. And then it's like, Hey, where did James go? He was just here three days ago and he was really amped and excited to work with us. And now he's nowhere to be found. We can't get him on text message. We can't get him on a phone call. Like I think that building that relationship long-term is probably the most important thing for anybody that's working with an agency like ours. So basically you're going to individualize and personalize it for their needs. You're not going to be a plug, plug and play guy. Well, the worst case for me is I, I hear these horror stories and I talk to everybody in the marketplace. I've talked to 1300 chiropractors in five and a half years. Like I, I've met and interviewed the greatest minds in this profession so far. And I survey the, the, the whole industry, what's working, what's not working and what can we improve upon? So I think when you have a guy like me, that's the Oracle of this profession that talks to everybody, like, why wouldn't you want to go with a company like ours that found out all the pain points and now those aren't problems anymore. So I'm going to give you another scenario. We're going to play case study. So I, I do a lot of lecturing and a lot of times I run across docs who've been in practice for X period of time. And again, they streamlined, they're trying to get to the proverbial finish line. They're looking at a five or seven year exit but they don't want to do anything or spend any money. And I tell them, how do you know you're going to go like this and you're not going to tail end at the end? So what suggestion do you have for them and how would you help a, a doc like that? Um, allocate money. Um, you got to move away from poverty consciousness to a mindset of abundance. And I think that a lot of times people say that things don't work, but they just worked with the wrong person. And I really believe that when you work with the right people, they take away that, that risk aversion. And, you know, I, I, I just believe that a lot of times when people deal with marketing, um, the people that they're dealing with don't focus on the follow-up. 
They don't focus on what happens when we do a great job of getting all these people to you. Now, what do you do? Well, we systematically make sure that that isn't a problem. Um, we will work with the team. We'll make sure that they're following their CRM the right way. We're, we're, we make sure that they follow every lead that comes in every day. So it's not just us doing marketing. You have to be prepared to take what we do for you and to actually make it work for you once they show up. So it, it can't be just like, hey, we're, we're going to go out there and get you a patient a day for the next year, which we will do. Like, I think that that's pretty cool. Um, that's one of the metrics I really love about what we're doing is we will get you a new patient every day. So if you want 365 new patients over the next year, that's a really nice metric. That's a good, pra that's a good number for a practice that can, a practice can thrive with that number. Cause we do know that the bloodline is new patients. However, some of the backdrop may also be to reactivate old patients. And I know you have some methodologies for that also. Well, before we go on to that, I just tell you, like, if, if you have a new patient problem, uh, I really believe it's based on a couple things. You got to learn how to keep the old patients. And I think that that's a really important thing is to impress upon the people that are coming in and to increase your PVA. So you won't always have a new patient problem. And, you know, I, I was just at a, the seminar this past weekend with Roberto Monaco, and this will talk exactly to your question. You said, um, what happens with a reactivation? Well, I'll tell you a lot of times when people are out there doing a, a marketing campaign and they're looking for more momentum for their practice to build, they don't realize that the new, the, the, the hot files that a, a client is working with the people that show up weekly that are on plans and that are like in the system, you have this much, I mean, it's probably 10%, maybe 5% of your entire practice is the people that are actually under care at one specific time. If you think about the old files that you have and the old patient records that you have it, one email saying, Hey, we have a new promotion going for our clinic. We want to re invite you back into the practice. I know it's been a little while since we've seen you. You'll probably get about 50 new upstarts from people that just need a reminder that you're still there for them. I think that understanding that you have an email list is your most viable part of your practice. It's not the new patients that you need. It's not the people that are already actively in patient care. It's these old files. Like if you went and looked at your x-ray like catalog and you went and looked at all the yellow envelopes in the back of like your storage bin, all those people at one time were patients of yours. They all want to come back and see you. So you have to be considerate that those people, it's easier to make money on a, a second sale than it is a first sale. So go back to that, that list that you have your patient file list and send a simple email. Hi, this is Dr. James Chester. We haven't seen you in a while. We just wanted to reinvite you back to the practice. I think it would be a good opportunity for us to check your spine again. If you like to do that, click the schedule and link here. Looking forward to seeing you. Brilliant. Very helpful. So let's talk a little marketing. What's essential for 2023 and beyond? I know you've got some tenants that you want to share with everybody. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's really the power of, of influence. Um, I think that third party validation is something that's really important. So you have to start getting your reviews on Google. Um, people shop by other people's experiences more than they shop with word of mouth these days. Like, so if you can get your Google reviews up, um, get on the first page of Google, I mean, you'll never have to look for a new patient again. So, so take that, a, take, take that as social proof, third social. party validate social proof, third really? party validation. And I always tell people this too, on social media, this is a great takeaway. Be social on social. You can't have like a one-sided conversation and you build engagement and you don't respond back to people. Like you have to be social on social. So those are some takeaways for the social media part of the world and marketing. Um, and try it all. Try every campaign under the sun when you're doing an ad campaign. We start our clients out. We do 12 campaigns at the same time and split test them down until we find out the one that's working best for that client. 
Like we're, we, 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 we work tirelessly to make sure that the image, the visual and the message all matches up. So until you try everything, you don't know if you're actually effective with the dollars that you're spending. So we dial that in and then we actually pick out the winners and we go towards that. And we're constantly tweaking and modifying those campaigns all the time. So it's not like, Hey, come work with us. And we do like one ad set and we're like, Oh, it's a $21 offer for, you know, your first visit and we're going to throw the farm to you. No, we actually split test on so many different things to make sure that what we're delivering is hitting the prospect the right way. And we get conversions from that. So other parts, join a BNI chapter, join a Toastmasters, join a young professionals network group, uh, jump into the chamber of commerce, put your money into your community, go shake hands, go hug people, go schedule lunch dates, go schedule coffee dates, go do dinner gatherings, like go out and meet your local community. There's nothing better than to become referable because of reputation. So go out to your local community and become the trusted resource for everybody to, to know that the chiropractor is the place to go. That was great. You know, I, I my phone's blowing up a little bit. So again, it's here where they're all letting me know what they say. Uh, they love the th idea of third-party validation. Uh, the gentleman who said is actually an actor. I won't say his name. And basically, he's always said to me that a really good movie, if you want to build a character, somebody else tells you how wonderful they are, or how tough they are, or how evil they are, because self-praise sucks. Now, I had another marketing guy said, yeah, James, I love what you're saying. Remember the old adage that my work speaks for itself, but you also have to speak for your work. So I really love that message that you conveyed. So I know that you only had a few short moments to come on with us. I really appreciate it. Tell everybody how they can get in touch with you. Yeah. I mean, the, the channel is always open on Facebook. Um, friend request me, send me a message. Um, I also get all direct messages from our website, chirohustle.com. We have the largest depository of chiropractic um, interviews that's on planet earth. Um, so if you want to see like, the most relevant content when it comes to chiropractors telling their stories. We talk about where the profession is going in the next 20 years. We talk about how they stay healthy. We talk about what they're doing for marketing, what they can improve upon, what didn't work, what, what can work. Um, I ask them who their influences are and their heroes. So coming to that website, just fall in love with our brand. You know, that's my biggest ask of anybody come be a fan of something that supports your profession and and show up and uh if you guys have questions i want to connect further um anybody watching this show today um i will dangle something out there for you if you made it this far in the interview um i have a course called new patients in a box it's the same systems that i use to break the world record for the most chiropractic patients ever scheduled in from one marketing event which is 665 new ones and if you guys want that course i'm going to send over the direct link to Dr. Robert, and he can post that in the show notes or with this interview, but it's the greatest work I ever put together as a course. I just want you guys to go use it. That's great. Thanks for being so uh, sharing with us. That's fabulous. Listen, James, it's been my pleasure. I know a lot of people who have a lot of things they may want to reach out to you. So be prepared for your inbox to flood up <laughs> and just listening to the 30 minutes, I'm ready. I've had patience in a few minutes to go see. I'm pumped. I appreciate that. And that's one thing that um, sanguine moments that I have with you, you know, uh, again, chiropractic can be sometimes a little morbid and it shouldn't be. It should be fun. It should be inviting. It should be invigorating. So thanks for the message. I really appreciate that. And um, we have to do this again. Thank you. It's, it's been a lot of fun. And like I said, at the beginning of the interview, hopefully I said a couple of things that you uh, could inspire you and you took your pen out and made some notes, because I think that's the most valuable thing is when we get time with people, we, we can make an impact. And I, I really believe that the more that we're on purpose, the more that we can change the culture and really push this profession forward. And, you know, I, I'll close it out. Um, you never know how far reaching something you do or say today will have an impact on millions of lives tomorrow. And that's a BJ yeah. Palmer quote. You know, that was great. You know, famous quote by Michael Pine, very similar to B BJ in that he said, what we do for ourselves dies with us. What we do for mankind lives forever. 
Fabulous. <laughs> hey, we're on it together. Thanks a lot, James. Everybody, Dr. Rob Silverman, Proven Health Alternatives. Thanks for having me. My pleasure.